declare today by the God of my glory and the God of my calling that the visitation that will bring your glory to limelight will happen today in the name of Jesus. The glory of God that made Pharaoh to dream a dream that necessitated Joseph to be brought out of prison. Uh -uh. That same glory will make your Pharaoh to dream a dream today. I mean that man that that woman that has a capacity and capability to be able to change your status and bring your vision to pass. Uh -uh. The Lord God will make them to demand for your services, to demand for your gifting, to demand for your skill, to demand for your expertise. The Bible says that Nebuchadnezzar dreamt a dream in Daniel chapter 4. And because of that dream, he sought for Daniel. I decree today that God will cause an event, an unusual occurrence, that will make the Nebuchadnezzar of your destiny to seek for you in the name of Jesus. The, 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 the son of Nebuchadnezzar, he saw the handwriting on the wall. He was troubled with his officers. And the wife of Nebuchadnezzar said, Don't bother yourself. There is a man in this kingdom. The spirit of the Holy God is in him. And they sought for Daniel. Ah, I pray this prayer for myself also. That those that will honor and, 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 and glorify your destiny. God will cause them to have a need for what you carry and what you what you represent. In the name of Jesus Christ. This day shall be a day of brightness. Yes, I see a new glory emerging over your destiny. In the name of Jesus. Darkness is over. Light has come to take its place. It's time for you to come to the city. And for your grace and your glory to begin to be seen by men and women that matter. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Today I want to speak to us about um, something that I believe you need. In the book of Proverbs chapter 17 and verse 22. Proverbs chapter 17 and verse 22. The scripture says, A merry heart does good to the body like medicine. A merry heart does good to the body like medicine. That means God is interested in your well-being. I, I, and I said to myself, why is God interested in my body? Why is God interested in your body? For the starter, God has chosen to dwell in our bodies by his spirit as a child of God. As a child of God, the spirit of the living God is in you and that is the life of God. Apostle Paul told the Corinthian church, he said, don't you know that you are the temple of the living God and that God dwells in you? So, your body is the custody, is the custodian of God's dwelling place on heart here. So, God is interested in the well-being of your body. And also, the Bible makes us to understand that the anointing of God that God has given to us is a spiritual force. And that anointing can only move in your life and through your life to bless other people for as long as your body is in shape. If your body breaks down and you die today, the anointing can no more work through your life. That's why God is asking me to tell you that he wants you to become aware that is interested in the well-being of your body. Maybe you are watching me and you say, but man of God, I don't think God is interested in me because I'm, I, 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 my body is broken with all manner of sickness, disease. I, I have a lot of infirmities and I have a lot of conditions that doctors do not have solution to. That is why we have the name of Jesus. If only you can believe. Peter said to that man that was born crippled at the age of 40, Peter told the man, he said, gold or silver I do not have, but what I have I give unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and be, and, and be healed. I, I, I bring you the same virtue. I bring you the same treasure. I, I, I may not be able to help you medically speaking, but since your sickness and your infirmities has refused to obey the law of nature as it is being designed with medicine, I therefore decree that in the name of Jesus, that spirit of infirmity, I I command you to leave your body. Satan, I command you to remove your hand from that fellow right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And I give you healing in the name of Jesus. As a servant of the Most High God, one anointed for the deliverance of nations, I give you healing in the name of Jesus. I command that your broken body begin to be restored back. The spirit of life, I command you to get back into your body. Yes, be made whole. Yes, I command right now. 
everything that is going out of hand in the name of Jesus Christ we are come back to normal every abnormality in your bloodstream in your system in the, in the diagnosis of your body I command that in the name of Jesus let everything come back to normal let the functionality of your body become restored in the mighty name of Jesus why because God is interested in your body that's why I title this message your mindset and the power of God now you see the way God has designed us as human beings, our spirit, our thinking, is what affects our body. That's why the Bible says, a merry heart, when your heart is joyful, it does good to your body like medicine. But when your heart is broken, when you are sad, the Bible says, it dries up your bone. You'll be, you'll be getting lean and then you'll be getting a lot of a lot of negative reaction in your body and doctors cannot find out what is wrong. And many a time, we from Africa and Asia, we always think that it must have been Satan or the demonic people that are causing the problem. But many a time, you are the cause. You know why? Because you have not chosen to allow your mind to be full of merriment. I, want to, I also want to show you one scripture again, Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23. Because today, I want to connect your life to your thinking. Look at what Solomon said out of the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. He said, keep your heart with all diligence. In other words, be careful the thought that you allow to reign in your heart. And I asked the question, Solomon, why are you saying that? He said, because out of those thoughts, out of what comes out of your life is the issues of your life. Another version says, because your life is shaped by your thoughts. Your life will end up, end up becoming what you are always thinking about. Because you see, Jesus said, if you believe in your heart and you don't doubt, but you believe what you, what you, what, what you said will come to pass, you will have whatsoever you say. Our thoughts influence our thinking. Our thinking influences our talking. That's why God told Joshua in Joshua chapter 1. God said, meditate on the word of God. Don't let it depart from you. Why? He said, make sure you say it every time. So that you'll be able to do it. And as you do that, you will prosper. And you will be successful. So I want us to understand the fact that our life is very precious to God. And if you believe that you have a purpose that God wants to serve in this generation, then one of the things you have to take care of is your body. And one of the ways to do it is to release the healing power that comes with a merry heart. Now, let me show you something in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4 and 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 and 5. You see, many a time we are busy fighting the external enemies. But majority of the time, the enemy of our life is what is what reigns in our mind, in our thoughts. The Bible says, for the weapon of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. What are they needed for? For the pulling down of strongholds. What is a stronghold? A stronghold is, 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 is a thought pattern that has kept you in a particular position for a long time. Maybe you keep saying, I am too fat. I cannot get a, a, a good man and ask about to marry me. It, when you keep talking about it like that and you believe it, it becomes a stronghold. It, it makes you to feel inferior when you see people that are handsome and are in shape. It makes you to think that maybe they will not consider you as a, as a good person to marry. You see, God wants us to know that he, uh, there's a stronghold that we have to break. Look at what he said in verse 5. He said that, he said, he said that casting down imaginations. Do you know what is called imagination? Formation of images in your mind. Formation of images in your mind. He said that the Holy Ghost is saying, listen, you have power from God. And that power is able to, verse 5, he said he's able to cast down arguments. Arguments. And every high thing that exhort themselves against the knowledge of God. So what we are talking about is we are talking about mindset, thinking pattern that are fighting the word of God, the knowledge of God's word in your heart. Do, can you remember those thoughts? Those things that you are thinking about and those thoughts are making you to resist the word of God, making you to disobey the scripture. 
all those things they have a way of affecting your life so i'm going to speak briefly the next 10 minutes here about i want to speak to you on how to make sure that your heart is full of merriment that you are joyful like i said to them in church whatever makes you merry do it if if cooking makes you to be joyful find time to cook if baking maybe you like to bake cake and when you bake it you feel good bake cake if if you know maybe on social media you know like on TikTok, I, I sometimes i watch some of those some of those people and i just laugh i laugh because you need to be merry satan is not going to take your permission to make you sorrowful so don't let the devil keep you out of your merriment in first peter chapter 3 and verse 10 look at what the bible said there i want to show us a few scriptures that can help you to enjoy life to be merry to to, to 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 have a merry heart the bible says for he who will love life do you love your life and see good days do you want to see good days i mean loving life and seeing good days both of them will create merriment make your heart joyful what does the bible say you need to do he said refrain your tongue from speaking evil you talk too much of evil and you see jesus said an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart speaketh forth evil and a good man out of the good treasure of his heart speaketh forth good so what you comes out of your mouth is telling me the reservoir that is in your heart if you are always judgmental about other people you are always seeing negative things about whatever people are doing you are the kind of person that always see problem with every solution something is wrong with your life you you cannot be happy because you are always speaking and thinking evil for he who will love life and see good days let him refrain his tongue from speaking evil don't speak evil concerning yourself. Don't speak evil concerning your spouse. Don't speak evil concerning your friends. Don't speak evil concerning your enemy. Don't speak evil concerning your children. Tame your tongue. Tame your tongue to speak good. And he said, his lips from speaking deceit. Stop deceiving people. You know something is wrong. So that way is not the way. And you are telling people to follow it. The Bible said that if you have that kind of heart, you will end up having a miserable life. But if you want to love life, and see good days keep your tongue from evil and stop deceiving other people let me show you another scripture in philippians chapter 4 and verse 8 you know today i'm talking about your mindset and the power of god i'm trying to make you see how you can have merry heart make your heart joyful my, my point is this why can't you um, um, uh, crack joke with your wife with your husband why must it be that you can do it with an outsider but not with your spouse Something is wrong. You should be able to you be able to gist together, laugh together, you know, talk, enjoy your company. That's the way God has designed it. You say no, that man is very frustrating. It's because of the evil that you have you have deposited in your heart concerning him. Forgive him. Ah, man of God, you don't know what he has done. Forgive him, oh, because that man that you are taking is prayer tire. It's another person's prayer point. Don't let them steal your husband. Draw your husband to yourself. Make your husband feel relaxed. When he's at home, make sure you put on all those skimpy clothes that will make him to feel, yes, I have a pretty wife. You say, man of God, what are you saying? I am saying make yourself look attractive and seductive to your husband. Instead of wearing mini skirt outside and you are tempting other people, why don't you wear it, wear it inside? We are the kind of clothes that your husband says, ah ah, hey, oh my God, he will have a nisha, oh, he shall have a bow. Then you tell him, he me, boke, he me, tiboche, he at the age of 70. And then you love each other, and then you smile together. You see, you, 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 you lie down on your husband's lap, your, your husband lie down on your lap. Listen, be merry, be merry. Ah. Philippians chapter 4, Jerry. <laughs> Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. The Bible says, Finally, my brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are of good report, whatever things are lovely, if there is any, any virtue, if there is anything that is praiseworthy, think, 
meditate on these things. In other words, make sure that you are careful of the things that dominate your thoughts. I am talking about to generate a merry heart. Remember, the Holy Ghost said through the scripture, merry heart will give you healing in your body. So let's use it. Let's generate it. The world is filled with so many bad news. Don't let the bad news that you are hearing, don't let them affect your consciousness. That's why you have to guard the gate of your heart. Anything that is not right, that is not true, that is not praiseworthy, shut it out. If they mention it, don't think about it again. Shut it out. Why? You are trying to protect your heart. Remember, that second content that we read before, that's the Revelation chapter 10, verse 1 and 5. The Bible says that there is a weapon that is given to you by God. They are not carnal, but they are mighty. What is their job? To break down stronghold and every imagination and anything that exhort themselves against the knowledge of God in your heart. Begin to fight those thoughts. Begin to fight those thoughts. Listen, everything does not answer to prayer. There is a way you are supposed to live your life and the way you live your life will help your prayer to come to pass. Wow. Hallelujah. I want us to go to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 to verse 34. Jesus was trying to warn his disciples, trying to make them know that many of the things that they think about and they concentrate their mind on is not needed. He said, Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. It's not life more than food. And your body more than clothing. Verse 26. Look at the birds of the air. For they neither sow, nor reap, nor gather into barn the birds of the air. Yet your heavenly father feed them. Are they not much more valuable than you? Are you no more valuable than them? Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? Can you make yourself grow taller because of your worry? Jesus says, so why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field. They neither sow, neither do they spin, nor toil. And yet, the Bible says, let's go to the next verse. The Bible says, and yet I say to you, that Solomon in all his glory, when he dressed with his finest clothes, he was not as arrayed like one of these flowers. Verse 30, now, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today they are alive, tomorrow they are thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Jesus is saying, why are you bothering your mind over things that you can't control? Why are you allowing things that will come and pass away to dominate your heart? The man offend you. The woman offend you. You are holding this since last week. Ah, And yet the Bible says that do not let do not let sun go down on your anger. You need to let go. Enjoy your heart. Make your heart full of merry. Enjoy your partner. Please, enjoy your family. Make sure that your children, you are so approachable to your children that they can talk to you. It's very important. Verse 31, Therefore, do not worry. That worry in the King James, he said, don't be anxious. Do not worry about saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? Uh, what shall we wear? After all these things, the Gentiles are seeking after. And your Heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. So what does he want them to do? He said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. Live tomorrow in the tomorrow. Enjoy your today. For tomorrow we worry about his own thing. Sufficient for the day is the trouble in it. What is Jesus saying? Don't be anxious about life. Seek God first. And be happy with whatever God gives you. Paul was telling Timothy. He said, if we have food and clothes to wear, that's okay. He said, many people are running after money and because of that love of money, they become swayed, they become distracted into all manner of things that are not praiseworthy. What I'm trying to tell you today, my dear, is this. God wants you to live a good life. Relax. Relax your tension. Eh? 
do what makes you relax. If watching a video, watching film can make you relax, create time for it. Jesus Christ told the disciples at a particular time, after they have gone to do the missionary work, when they came back, the Bible said Jesus Christ took them aside to go and rest and relax. There's, there's a need for rest and relaxation in the scheme of life. Stop worrying too much about what you cannot control. You say, man of God, you don't understand what I'm going through. Can you, can you provide solution by your worry? If the answer is no, why don't you cast it onto God? Peter said, casting all your cares on him, for he cares for you. I can tell you categorically, God is interested in your joy. When you rejoice, when you laugh, God is happy because you are his temple. I therefore pray for you today that in the name of Jesus, this spirit of tension that make your life miserable, I curse it in the name of Jesus. Those kind of evil friendship, like the friends of Job, that their talk and their and their and their counsel is multiplying your sorrow. I command that in the name of Jesus, the hand of God will cut you off from such people. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray that the mindset, the thinking pattern, all those strongholds that are making your life miserable, I cause them in the name of Jesus. I release you today from their stronghold and I command that it is well with you in the mighty name of Jesus. You will enjoy peace. You will enjoy prosperity. You will enjoy glory. You will enjoy you will enjoy the rest of your life in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that the grace to be satisfied with who God has made you to be, receive that grace now in Jesus mighty name. Amen. Do you know that if a, if a pastor, pastor's wife Elder, elder's wife, deacon, deaconess, or you just love to pray. Do you know there's a forum where we can, you can join other people? Join us every third Saturday of the month for Iron Sharpenet Iron Ministers Prayer Meeting. I'm specially inviting you. It's a glorious time in God's presence. The Bible says that the, 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 the fervent prayer of righteous men make tremendous power available. Come, let's generate spiritual power together so that that power can, 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 can move into your life like Lazarus and cause every death thing in you to rise again. It's time for you to prosper. It's time for you to move on. And another question I want to ask you is this, my dear listener. Do you have a church that you are regularly committed to? A church that you can call your home? Stop staying at home. Go join a living church. And if you are in Houston and you don't have a church you are committed to, why not come and join and be a part of our church family? In our church family, we meet every Sunday by 10 a.m. in the morning. And I trust that as you come to join us, you will enjoy more of God's grace upon my life and my ministry. But if you have a pastor, you are attending a church where your pastor is taking care of you, praying for you, teaching you the word of God, giving you opportunity to serve. Stay there and the Lord will honor you. If you are sick in your body, you are oppressed by demonic powers. And you need me to pray with you. That's why we set aside the first Sunday of every month in our church as our anointing and miracle service Sunday. Come around, be part of the service by 10 o'clock, and before the service is over, I'll call those who need to be prayed for, and I'll pray for you. And the prayer of righteous men will heal you in the name of Jesus Christ. Do you have this, my books, Vision Fulfillment? Now it's your turn. This book is specifically designed to help you understand the nature of God's talent and gifting in your life. The difference between the talent you have before you are born again and right now after you give your life to God. And how to put them to use. With a gift of $10 or more, I'll send this to you anywhere in the United States. And the second one I'm showing is overcoming satanic operating system. Satan operates strategically. And the Bible says that we are not ignorant of the enemy's devices. I believe this book will help you to become exposed to the strategy of the devil. And now you can overpower him. With a gift of $10 or more, I'll send this book to you anywhere in the United States. The third one I have here is Asian Secrets that guarantee financial abundance. If you are a child of God and you have been paying your tithe but you are not seeing progress, you need understanding. It's not just paying tithe alone. There are things you need to know and put to use so that you can be able to maximize the place of the blessing of God upon your life. With a gift of $10 or more, I'll send this book to you. And if you want the three of them, with a gift of $35 or more, I'll send these three books to you anywhere in the United States. You are watching me right now. You have not given your life to Jesus. You say, man of God, I want that peace you are talking about. Just place your hand upon your chest and say with me, Lord Jesus, 
I come to you today. I am a sinner. Save me of my sin. Wash me away from my sins. Accept me into your sonship. Accept my heart, O God. Become my Lord and become my Savior from this very day. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer, that's all it takes. Christ has done the major work. You are just receiving the salvation. Three things to do. Get a New Testament Bible and start reading at least one chapter a day so that you can start knowing how the Lord Jesus is going to live your life and to comport yourself. The second thing, join yourself to a Bible-believing church. Bible-believing, don't stay at home. Now that you're a child of God, you need to belong to a church where you can learn the Word of God, where you can grow in the things of the Spirit. And as you do that, you begin to understand how to work with God. And if you if you if you if you so in, you are so inclined, you can be a part of our church family. The address will be on the screen. And call call the number 872-731-7263 for more information. And the third thing to do, tell your friends, you are now a child of God. Tell people you're a child of God. Be glad about it. Until I come here again next time. Don't you ever forget, no matter what you have gone through in life, I trust that from now on, the testimony of your life will change and it will become that you are wonderful because Jesus is real. I'll see you next time. God bless you. Bye-bye. Wow. I'm Reverend Sam Ajibade, and I want to take this time to specially invite you to be a part of our worship service any Sunday. You know, our church address is Grace Ministries International 11214. Plainfield Street by West Belfort, suit D 77031. Listen to me, everybody needs someone to talk to. In case you have need for counseling, just you can just call the number 872 731 7263. Listen to me, if you are looking for a place where you will encounter God and get insight in the world, I'll invite you to be a part of our church service every Sunday morning. God bless you until I see you. Bye bye.